What do you feel, especially with youth, what do you feel becomes the biggest hurdles for them around self-esteem and confidence? Oh, fear and shame. They they yeah. behave like wusses. They know it. They try to cover it up. It creates shame. And then that, then they have fear about hiding the shame mm. from everybody, which spikes anxiety, which increases the chances of them behaving in a way that causes more shame. And then they're in that shitty washing machine situation. Do you struggle with confidence, low self-esteem, or social anxiety? Then stick around because in this episode of the Mental Health Toolbox, we're talking with clinical psychologist, Dr. JJ Kelly, AKA the punk rock doc on the importance of learning emotional intelligence skills to improve your self-esteem. So let's go. Dr. J.J. Kelly, the punk rock doc, is a licensed clinical psychologist, emotional intelligence skills training expert, and best-selling author. J.J. is also the CEO and founder of Unorthodox Incorporated, a punk alternative to traditional psychotherapy. Dr. Kelly and the Unorthodox live their lives with the belief that the best global healing is achieved by teaching people the skills to like themselves. Dr. J.J. Kelly believes that happy people act right. So let's dive in. You can learn more about Dr. J.J. Kelly's work at drjjkelly.com. Hello, Dr. Kelly. Thank you so much for making time to be on the Mental Health Toolbox podcast today. I really appreciate it, and I'm excited to learn more about your work and what you're doing. Cool. Thank you. Happy to be here. (laughs) Yes, yes. So this will be fun. I did a little, of course, research on the work you're doing. It's very exciting, but let's go ahead and have you introduce yourself and what it is that you do and what you want to share. Cool. I already like that you said Dr. Kelly because uh, everybody says there's like this trend of people saying Dr. JJ, which I actually hate. (laughs) I was going to ask about that. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't say anything. People can do whatever they want. I don't care. But it reminds me of like, uh, like Dr. Laura and Dr. Mm-hmm. Phil and all that mm-hmm. bullshit. Like, right. that's like the real deal says the last name since like the beginning <laughs> right. of time, you know? So I I don't know. Maybe if I'm like on TV, I'm going to have to be like, ask Dr. J. Uh, it's more trendy. Yeah. But, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I like that. Yes. So what do you want to know? All right. Well, I would, of course, love to learn about uh, how you got into the work you're doing. I know you're a psychologist, obviously, PsyD, right? Yep. Clinical exactly. psychologist. Yep. So you uh, you walk the walk. But definitely the work you're doing with this particular population mm-hmm. around interpersonal effectiveness and self-esteem work. I think our listeners and other other clinicians, you know, our audience is a mixed bag between the two. And Mm -hmm. um, my aim with this show is, of course, to provide actionable information, Mm -hmm. skills that they can actually, you know, improve our quality of life. Not all just philosophy, but, you know, what does it look like and how do we do it? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very tangible. Like right now. Exactly. Yeah. What can we do today to improve your quality of life? You know, by by even 1%. Right. Love it. it. So. I'm Already, looking for the levers, right? I can see like our values aligning, which is part of the answer to the question is like you were saying, you know, uh, emotion regulation, actually all the modules of DBT support someone being able to act in alignment with their values, even when they're emotionally activated. So something goes on when we're not trained, right? In emotional intelligence, a switch flips and we decide to give ourselves permission to act the asshole because we're that pissed. Mm -hmm. So somehow, you know, we just decide it's justified to behave in this way. And then we have shame about it later. But I think the (laughs) key to happiness, it's mostly just reducing shame so that you Mm. can embrace the world as you are authentically and then behave how you actually want to behave because it aligns with your values. So that's easy conceptually. Mm-hmm. And it's actually not that hard when you once you get trained too. I mean, I have a lot of young people and people of all ages actually that 
you know, their, their self-esteem was in the toilet when we met Mm -hmm. and you truly can discipline yourself and train yourself to notice those moments that used to bite you in the ass later and just don't do that. (laughs) Right. Well, retrospect. (laughs) Yeah. But you can start to anticipate it. If you can get real about what your usual jackass behaviors are, we call it willfulness. So Mm -hmm. your willful behaviors, the ones you already know you engage in when you're emotionally activated that you pay a price later usually with shame. Mm. So if you can be honest with yourself, which we do such naked honesty, it's so brave. I just love it so much. When we laugh too, we laugh Mm -hmm. at ourselves, which I think is, uh, you know, that shows you got some resilience if you can laugh. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So we all like just spill, laugh about it. And then that puts it in your mind to start anticipating what kind of situation usually makes, makes you do that thing. Cause it's a situation, Mm. right? It's not our Mm -hmm. fault. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's that (laughs) out there. That's the problem. You know, if they just do exactly what I want, everything would be fine. (laughs) (laughs) If only we're so simple. Right. Right. And that's not what reality is. So, you know, you, you play with the cards you got dealt. Some of the cards are going to be shitty sometimes. So Deal with it and still Mm. continue to behave according to your values. And when you do that in a difficult situation, you're really scared, you're really mad, you're emotionally activated. And then you do the thing you wanted to do and you collect your own data that Mm. the emotional intelligence skills work. Mm. Now you're starting to build self-confidence and self-esteem. You're not eroding it with mm-hmm. those behaviors you used to do. All right. Well, that's a wrap, everybody. <laughs> that sums it up. Mike, drop by. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so simple to like, right. you can hear the, like, you know the truth when you hear it. It's not like mm. I'm saying something that's novel. However, it's also novel, not and is, because people don't practice it. Mm-hmm. You can know it without doing it, knowing it doesn't get you there. A lot of smart people are full of shame and anxiety and reducing their capacity to experience joy daily. Mm -hmm. It's not about smart. You just because your IQ is high doesn't mean your emotional intelligence is high. I got kids that have way more emotional intelligence than veteran clinicians. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they do yeah, the work they don't yeah. talk about it or just have a job where like they get to portray themselves as smart all the time right right that's exactly. not real huh yeah so that's my that's problem well with the profession <laughs> yes yes well i'm with you on that definitely i mean when we speak from lived experience i feel like it goes a whole lot further faster especially in working with clients when we and when we have a not just sympathy but empathy for what their struggles are totally you know, my my experience too working with that's why you know why i have such a passion for working with you know the underdogs and people you know people people who grew up with unorthodox backgrounds and had to essentially bootstrap their way i don't even like that term bootstrap but basically figure out how to be resourceful figure out how that Coming to an understanding that where you start in life does not determine where you end up. Totally. Right? That there's always choices and, you know, how to overcome things like social anxiety and shame and guilt and fear, right? And yep. never not feeling like enough and imposter syndrome and everything that comes with that, right? I just have such a, especially young adults, such a strong passion for that. So, and you just need yeah. one adult to mm-hmm. listen and validate what you're going mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. regularly enough. That's all you need to like move forward. Right. Right. Absolutely. And I think I, it's a privilege to be that adult for so many people. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. the best job ever. So for me. Yeah. I, it's being a, being a therapist, being a counselor is like, I, I, I don't take it for granted. It's a privilege. It's an honor to be able to just be a part of somebody's story, to listen to somebody's story you know to be a confidant it's really quite quite a thing you know it is. Yep. provide a safe space so 
I know we've we've already touched on a lot. We've driven by a lot. Things I definitely want to dive more into, those concepts of things like uh, self-concept versus self in context, right? Sometimes, like you said, we look for external validation, right? Or we're afraid to to take chances, right? That's where the application comes in. The self-shame, the doubt, the fear of disappointment, of abandonment, of failure, the things that really get in our way, right? That stem directly from self-esteem right and so um even touching on what you were just talking about a little bit ago with how we look backwards right and and dbt that's called chaining right you take an event you break it down into the sequence of events right and then you look for points of intervention so what could we have done what could have been done different what skills could be applied and then we look for future implications right how can we do this differently in the future yeah. And so and that old time CBT added. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's not reinventing the wheel. These mm-hmm. things make sense. Just mm-hmm. knowing it isn't the same as doing it, man. You got to do. <laughs> right. the thing. I was having a conversation with my brother yesterday on the phone and he's a, you know, he's a academic currently writing a book and stuff. And he was asking me about some con, you know, like, some ideas for a chapter around managing positive, negative emotions and stuff like that. And so then I went off on a rabbit show. I was like, well, you know, nothing's really new, you know, since Napoleon Hill. (laughs) (laughs) Think and grow rich, you know, it's the same principles, just kind of regurgitated over and over again in self-help and and application. But that's because the good good news about that is because, you know, once we understand human behavior, it's pretty fixed. (laughs) Yeah. Ish. Yeah, the prince ish, but the I mean the the principles around managing our emotions, managing these internal struggles, for the most part, are you know there's a common thread here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so whether we call you know whatever we want to package that, the principles are, are salient. So that's the good news. And right. it's it's such a great model, DBT, because we don't have to agree. Hmm. And I I can validate you without agreeing. Your values might be different than my values. And it's about, I got skills to help you behave how you want to behave according to your values. So it doesn't have to be like the doctor knows everything and you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Just do, Mm -hmm. you know, mm -mm, I'm not into that. Right. Yeah. Everyone's an expert of their own life. They know what their struggles are. They usually have the answers already within them. We just figure out what those are, help them, you know, figure out, pull that out, right? How to apply it, how to address those, those fears, those concerns, those barriers. But before we dive any further into that, I'm wondering if you could share with with us a little bit about your experience as a psychologist, what pulled you into this particular aspect, you know, niche of psychology, you know, be a DBT or interpersonal effectiveness, um, and maybe the populations you work with the most and why? Okay. Well, I (laughs) pretty much the second I learned what DBT was uh, back in grad school, I mean, what was that, 2002? Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, that, definitely that. Um, You you know, sometimes you get intuitive, you know, your gut talks to you about that. Mm -hmm. And also, Mm -hmm. like, come on, ride the horse the way it's going. I mean, you get to Mm -hmm. swear, you get to be real. You get to, you know, challenge and, you know, the authenticity is just so built in. And the thing I was talking about before, we don't have to have the same values in order for it to work. Mm -hmm. It's your choice. It's very empowering. Um, It isn't the doctor knows. I mean, what was I going to do? Do it be an analyst? Like, I don't. Mm -mm. like I was gonna Mm -hmm. go the Freudian super sexist old bullshit no I wasn't I mean I do think that's interesting it just always leaves you at like okay well what do you do about it now like Mm -hmm. I dbt so action oriented and that's how I am too so it you know you find the thing that speaks to you and uh I just you know I liked it more and every year I I mean, I'm still a student of it too. Mm -hmm. And I've been teaching it since like 2004. And it just keeps, you know, I think that must be the, the Buddhist piece of it, It, you Mm -hmm. know, thousands of years old, like it's going to take more than a lifetime 
to learn and master. And I certainly am an expert on it. However, that, that if you're going, I mean, if you really are smart, you know, that you're always learning Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to be open to that. And it's ever evolving. I mean, I just dig that so much, the constant learning of it. And teenagers, I don't know, maybe that's about my personality too. But like, (laughs) I just got kept getting sent as an intern. I just kept getting sent all the like most troubled kids, Mm -hmm. you know, the self-harming and uh, uh, all of it, you know, the, the most acting out. And I think that was because the veterans that I worked under were, you know, they're, they were dealing with these parents who had like tried everything. And honestly, I think a lot of them were like, just go to JJ. Like she, she can't like make them worse probably, (laughs) (laughs) but then they're getting better and they're, you know, Uh they're all, they're getting better. The sparkles coming back into their eyes. And it's just, um, they can smell bullshit a mile away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We share that skill and we can just move really quickly by getting right to that edge and keeping it real and the naked honesty, which requires courage mm-hmm. and the trust right away. If we're both being real, that happens very quickly. And, you know, they're kind of all or nothing with the trust. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I get that. Um, sure. And just hungry, so hungry. I remember being like that at 14 too, being like, is any adult ever going to listen to me? I think I'm smarter than half these teachers. Mm -hmm. Like I have things to say Mm -hmm. and you're just in such a lower power position as a teenager, you know, but they do have things to say. And these, my God, these kids are so much smarter than I ever was. I mean, all right. Right. Yeah. Oh coming. my gosh. And the <laughs> academic time, right? pressures. Oh my God. <laughs> They're so stressed out. You know, that we we fucked around and stuff, you know, like lightweight trouble. <laughs> and oh, yeah, I was running the streets at 14. I had no expectations. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, how we survived even <laughs> yeah. is is a miracle. But these kids are different. They're scared. And then they're ashamed that they're so scared. And then they intellectually intellectualize right the defense Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. using their brains to like explain away their lack of courage so that I didn't know that was going to be my job but awesome because I'm basically teaching them to play and laugh and experience joy make mistakes it's not going to kill you Mm -hmm. most of Mm -hmm. them (laughs) I mean and baby step it trespass for Christ's sake. I mean, they don't do any, they don't do anything except get so stressed out. Then they take drugs. And Mm. that's not, that's not, you know, you have to have the courage to do brave things sober. They're going to turn into adults that like, can't have a conversation with people without alcohol in their system or something like, we don't want that. Right. Right. So yeah. So oh, it's real. Uh, yeah. It's so real. As we we're talking about this, I was just thinking like it's almost, you know, teenagers, that population, early teens is kind of like ground zero for a lot of this work. Totally. Because a lot of the stuff, these, the way that we learn to cope with stress, the way that we learn to manage relationships and people and the, what kind of risks to take, a lot of that gets solidified yeah. into adulthood. Like you said, and if substance abuse is part of the mix, then it's kind of that whole arrested development thing. You don't yes. learn how to feel your feelings and how to cope with that. And it becomes a real problem and we have to reparent ourselves as adults. Yeah. Which is a lot more work. Yeah. And sometimes when I think about, I mean, it's like I've prevented a whole Bay area generation from becoming narcissists probably. (laughs) You You know, do you ever think about the like potential ripple effect of your work with people. I don't think about that much, but Mm -hmm. when I do daydream about that, it's so thrilling to think about the impact. And Mm -hmm. you know, some of, I got somebody in their early thirties who I saw when she was 14 Mm. trying to text while in session. And I was like, Oh no, 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 (laughs) 
<laughs> we don't do that. And now she just had her second baby. I mean, oh hmm. my gosh. Wow. Like generational. Yeah. Whoa, that's mind blowing, you know? It is. It and is. that's one, one kid. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So cool. It is cool when you kind of zoom out and you see those the small wins and you're like, wow, okay. So this, you know, when you see something's making a difference, it's it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Big deal. Sure is. Yeah. Well, I know the work you're doing is priceless because of the work I do and the people I worked with and especially in the DBT realm. And so I know, you know, how how crucial and how dedicated that work is. It's not like a one and done. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of deep work. Yeah. Right? That seems yeah. conversational. It's sort mm-hmm. of like mm-hmm. a, a buddy of mine I went to grad school with once described me to others as um, Dr. Kelly. She's smoking mirrors people into happiness. Now that sounds a little mustache twisty, malevolent, uh-huh. but the idea is the laughter helps the medicine go down. You know, like a relaxed brain works better. So if we're, if it appears like we're shooting the shit and I've got, seven different things going on in the back of my brain but it's still light for the most part i think it gets in better absolutely it's like the whole alpha state of mind you know the alpha waves right it's when we're relaxed that our mind has room to breathe totally can be curious and be inspired and make connections creative yes yes and a lot of this is I mean, I've argued with an artist friend of mine, a painter, because I'm like, oh, I'm an artist. I am. Like, Mm -hmm. this this thing that we do has improv to it. It has absolutely um, creative. It has, like, trusting your own intuition and knowing how to separate that. Like, there is such an intricate dance going on that, yeah, hell yeah, I'm an artist. Absolutely. I care what you yes. said. You don't know Absolutely. what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> right. Oh, yes. Counseling <laughs> in and of itself is an art, right? Yeah. But especially when you're dealing with um, a lot of the deep work kind of stuff you're doing, it's definitely an art and mm-hmm. finding, and it's going to be different because every, every person is a different canvas in that sense. Every relationship is unique between the chemistry of the counselor and the, exactly. the client or whatever you want to call them, consumer, client, patient, person. Right. Student. It's a unique yes. dynamic that, you know, is, might, might require a different approach every time. Yep. And so very it unique does. indeed. Yeah. And that's fun too. It is. Keeps it fresh every day. Yeah. So I'm curious. There's really, I mean, in my mind, there's really two, two things to marry here. One is what are the most applicable or interpersonal skills that you find really move the needle and what areas do you feel are become the biggest challenges for self-esteem especially for youth as they're as they're when they get stuck right what what keeps them stuck well let's okay okay. so when i'm asked two questions like that i can't (laughs) (laughs) like what was the let's do them separately for double barrel related but in order to stay in the present, yeah. I want so maybe we'll start with the self esteem. So, okay. what do you feel, especially with youth, what do you feel becomes the biggest hurdles for them around self esteem and confidence? Oh, fear and shame. They they yeah. behave like wusses, they know it, they try to cover it up, it creates shame, and then that then they have fear about hiding the shame mm. from everybody, which spikes anxiety which increases the chances of them behaving in a way that causes more shame and then they're in that shitty washing machine situation yes yes that's very well put yeah is it, <laughs> so it is. Yes. i'm very visual <laughs> i'm a visual talker you know <laughs> I am too. yeah yeah so what was what was the first question oh the the skill right right which skills do you feel help yeah. in terms of uh moving the needle away from Perhaps if, if shame is the biggest challenge, mm-hmm. what skills do you feel really help un, un, get them unstuck in that area? Well, I, I have two answers for that. The, mm-hmm. What I thought when you first asked it was the validation piece. Mm-hmm. Um, you, as you know, the cornerstone of DBT is validation. And mm-hmm. all that means is naming your emotions. 
and making sure they're separate from thoughts like mm-hmm. shrinks have totally fucked up and told people just give an I feel statement. So now everybody says I feel all the time, even when it's a thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like I feel that those are thoughts. If there's a that or a like after the word feel, it's a thought. Mm-hmm. The very next word is to be happy. Great, sad. Important distinction. Yes. I do a lot of this um, and write it out too, so that you can visually see the like or that after the word feel. If you can mm. cross out the word feel and replace it with the word think and the sentence still works, that's a thought. Right. Not a feeling. Gotcha. So just being able to separate thoughts and feelings with language is in and of itself validation. And naming your feelings is an internal validation system mm. instead of looking, being dependent on the environment. Mm-hmm. For external validation, basically a recipe for narcissism. Mm. So just keep naming your emotions and you don't have to do the, it's no big deal, but it's no big, I feel angry, but it's no big deal. That's invalidating right. your anger. Just leave it. Or, or better yet, notice that the it's no big deal is a thought generated mm. by the feeling that you're having and mm. now separate that. Thoughts are not fact just because we think them. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. subject to argument, even within right. themselves, <laughs> yes. whereas the emotions are not. Mm-hmm. Again, it's so simple. Nobody does it. Yeah. Nobody does it. I and struggle with that. And I'm a, you know, I'm trained in this. Area. <laughs> right. I have to catch myself all the time. Like, wait, right. wait, wait. wait. We all come from a family that like encourage certain emotions and discourage others. Also, we live in a patriarchy. So as a dude, you, the only emotion you're allowed to feel societally sanctioned is anger. Mm. Well, that sucks. Right. Bad recipe. Yeah. Right. You know, but also like whatever family, you know, we didn't do fear in my family. It went right to anger. Irish, Midwestern. You know, I mean, all <laughs> kinds of reasons, you know, a lot of a lot of the Bay Area people do not do anger, hmm. which is really dangerous for kids because anger is the one that tells you your boundaries are being crossed. Absolutely. Right. Jesus, talk about a recipe for shame and anxiety. You never do hmm. few things skyrocket fear and anxiety as quick or as hard as stuffed anger. Right. Containment. Boom. Yeah. And they got no idea. It it appears like it presents like generalized anxiety. Mm. They don't know. They can't pinpoint the source. That makes my job so easy. Like they wear it. (laughs) I can see it on them before a word is spoken. They kind of, hover with like they reverberate like you can feel that mm-hmm. when somebody's got that kind of anxiety on board it's like oh, that is like time bomby absolutely absolutely and they need to to have like a valve release that's uncomfortable but tolerable mm-hmm. you know you don't blow the lid off of somebody that's stuffed anger for years or decades right let it decompress first right? yeah <laughs> like some way to vent it before you you, yeah, you pop together. the together yeah you don't pop the balloon you just like ee, you know mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. until they're like okay i've had enough fine mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. i respect that and then that's modeling boundaries yeah You know, a lot of our work, I think, is just being a decent human being and showing them how it's done, Mm -hmm. how to be happy, how to like yourself, how to behave according to your own values, which increases self-esteem and self-confidence. That's leadership. Absolutely. Not telling people what to do. All of that transpires, you can, without words. They can just watch. Mm -hmm. What's that saying? Words caught than taught. Yeah. What it say Number, that again? More is caught than taught, right? Oh, I have never heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe I, I did somewhere that. stuck yeah, with me. Yeah. 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 Nonverbal body language modeling, right? Yep. Yeah. Like you said, just by basically being empathetic, 
right? By, by being genuine, transparent, and vulnerable Finish to other it. people. Yeah. yeah. That's a great, yeah. Very well put. Yeah. <laughs> I love being complimented for cursing. Right? I get so much crap for it. So it's, oh, really? Oh, God. Not from my clients. Uh-huh. Not from clients, from colleagues mostly. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, it's that's not the world we live in. So It's, not. it's usually like <laughs> male MDs much older than me. Go figure. Right, right. I know when clients apologize for cursing in session, I'm like, no, no, please. I'm like, do you. <laughs> I'm not here to stifle you, you know. <laughs> hey, that would early on. I'm like, hello, have we met? <laughs> curse away. You can't curse at me. I have very few rules, but cursing at me is one of them. You can't break shit right. either, you right. know, like, um, because things get heated from time to time. Oh, but. sure. That's, yeah. Like you mentioned, sometimes anger is a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. Because it's especially in this population. It inward for years even when mm. it's met a lot of it's meant for someone or something else right but if they feel safe enough to display anger in session that's it's a good thing unless like you said unless it's aggressive but and um, even if it is like i can contain it you know like sure, I, sure. I don't have to like physically take people down anymore i don't do that work anymore mm. and you know people are in my home now right like up nice. on the deck like uh that they have to make a cut to know where i live you know? <laughs> like right. i gotta know i'm not gonna be in danger within a reasonable margin of error mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. yeah very good very exciting work you're doing it's it, very is excellent. So cool. it is it's very exciting now you've written quite a bit about this work as well right you have some you're an author not just a psychologist got a mm -hmm. series i i believe i do yes the holy shit series yes nice. <laughs> and i started with the cutting book holy shit my kid is cutting because i i don't really do much in the way of separate sessions with parents because mm -hmm. the kids won't tell me anything then i've tried it oh, it right. doesn't work so i just don't do it people particularly here don't like that too bad go to someone else. But um, it was my gesture to parents to be like, here's a parenting manual. Like, I'm not going to have separate sessions with you, but you can see very clearly how I work. And it gives you a lot of, you know, contracts, family contracts, and like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what kind of specialist to go to? Like, it's, it's like a here you go. I'm not trying to hide things. I just mm -hmm. need them to trust me. Mm -hmm. So the cutting book is a parenting manual, whether your kid is self-harming or not. And the second one, the holy shit, I'm a gifted misfit is written for the young folks, but it's, mm -hmm. it's my eight weeks of DBT in the shortest mm -hmm. book I could write. Nice. So that again, I can be like, well, this is what I'm doing with your kid here read this or listen to it. It's funnier if you listen to it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and the funny thing is, is the third book was originally going to be the first one. Years ago, mm. I started thinking about the holy shit, I'm uh, dealing with a narcissist book. Mm. That's a and fun topic. People, yes, people love that. I, <laughs> I loathe the fact that this word narcissist is being thrown around like it's a synonym for asshole when it's huh. really a very complicated, layered disorder. Um, so I tried to give different snapshots of the kinds of narcissists you'll come in contact with because it's so complicated and then give like a, this is what they say. And then this is what you usually say. And that doesn't work. Say, mm. say this instead, because they're slippery, right? And they mess with your mind. All the gaslighting now, and stuff. You know? I'm tying, I'm tying the connection here too, because I, I believe maybe the, 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 the origin, right. For, for a book like that would be because when we're talking about DBT or emotional dysregulation, a lot of that is formulated through our primary caregivers right yeah to a large extent inconsistencies or poor modeling or gap you know we think about things like gaslighting or and that that kind of behavior to a child who's already dichotomous yeah. learning 
learning how the world works, but then getting incongruent incongruent responses, right? Uh, with the work, how the world actually works, or even within the same household. Yes, seems like that would be a fitting fitting book for a child who's dealing with maybe a parent who's a narcissist or has, I should say, narcissistic traits. That's what um, I say too. I don't really yeah. say is. Yeah, I mean, it's for the title because it's catchier, but like. I I go right into that right away in the book. Like I'm not, because people are going to read it and be like, oh my God, am I a narcissist? You know, no, we all have narcissistic vulnerabilities from how we grew up and maybe traits, but like, I don't know. I DSM, I'm not that into that anyway. Yeah, it's just a compass. It's just to give us a ballpark idea what's going on, right? And it's more for us talking to each other. Yeah. Like clinicians talk, it's just shorthand. But in the yeah, I mean, again, to be you know clear is really the, the way we find action, right? And so mm-hmm. what we're talking about here is you know being mindful of the messages we're getting, the modeling we're getting from society, and finding out you know on a large scale is that how the world actually works, or is this my just my microcosm? In which case, we need to change the way that we're thinking, our schema, as it's called, right, about how the world works. Yeah, yeah. About how we fit in the world, how we relate to the world, how the world relates to us, so forth. Assumptions, beliefs, rules, right? Yeah. And I was calling, I, I mean, I've been calling narcissism an epidemic like way before the pandemic. Hmm. American culture. Yeah. We got to do something about shame. Yeah. And yeah. Fear. yeah. Yep. People don't like themselves. It's like, so much self-loathing and hiding and pretending Mm -hmm. such a bummer absolutely now i i read something on your site um that just really jumped out at me happy people act right (laughs) everybody loves that i said that (laughs) on a path that's funny because i don't say things like right and wrong right like dbt is about the gray not the black and white that of course right so it's funny that i See, I said it and it caught on. Um, and now <laughs> I'm just kind of right. going with it, like the Dr. JJ yeah. thing, you know. Um, I, what did you, what was your reaction to that? Well, like you said, my, I didn't jump to like, oh, good, bad, black, and white. Right. I didn't think of it in that sense. I thought, even from my personal experience, when I feel small, when I feel like I'm containing, when I feel like I'm deferring, to Ooh, other people, none of those are emotions. Right. Oh, right. Right. Thank you. Right. When I have done those things. But you felt what? It's Especially small. when I was younger. Right. I would feel small. But small is not. But that, what does that mean? Emotion. It means I would compromise my values. It means that. What you? Feel? That would be the. That would be the reaction or the compensatory behavior. To what? Right? Fear. Of abandonment, Shame. rejection. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Not being approved. And validation. I, do you see how hard it yes. is for people, even trained people to get to the emotion? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it takes practice. Yes. Please sure go on. Does. Yeah, that's what jumped out to me. I was like, oh, well, because I know you, you, you do a lot of shame work, self-love, uh-huh. self-compassion, acceptance. And so if the kryptonite is shame, yeah, you know, that makes sense. Because if we know, if we learn to love ourselves and be compassionate, confident, laugh at ourselves our our shortcomings right to have a strong sense like re- resilience if we want to use that term mm-hmm. strong sense of self then we will act with more intention as opposed to reactive right mm-hmm. and be we'll more be in ways where we feel proud of ourselves exactly because i i'm a firm believer that when we make poor decisions oftentimes it comes from a place of fear or mm-hmm. shame yeah Right. Yeah. yeah. Some unmanaged activated mm-hmm. emotion. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, oh, it's my trigger. Yeah, too bad. Your triggers are your responsibility to manage. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. like an insinuation that I'm gonna change something. No, sorry. That's <laughs> not how the world works. Your right. triggers are your responsibility. I don't know right. your entire history and what words to stay away from because your grandma said that to you. That's not my responsibility. Mm-hmm. 
that's a weird offloading of responsibility that is now passing as like emotional intelligence and it's bullshit. Yeah. So a lot of like, a lot of bullshit that is being passed off as like pseudo intelligence or pseudo emotional intelligence. You know, people get the jargon, Mm -hmm. but not in the discipline and the practice of it. Mm -hmm. And that's dangerous. Ignorance was when you could spot that easier to be like, "Uh, no. But now people are like gaslighting each other on the daily, whether they Mm. know it or not. That's not cool. Right. Right. Which is why this work is so important, you know. Totally. Self work. Yeah. Personal development. You know inside when you're full of shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Sure. And, you know, I say to kids, I'm like, you know, bullshit is a skill. Mm-hmm. It is, and, and, you know, sometimes you need it. I just want you to know when you're doing it. Because currently mm. you're believing all your own bullshit and that's really dangerous. Mm. Wow, but there's so, so much shame well <laughs> about the skill part, right? That's why I say yeah. it like that. Uh-huh. You know, teachers, parents, bosses, it's going to happen. Let's get real. We've all sure. done it. And it's not always a moral. Sometimes mm-hmm. there are kind lies. Like shit's not all black and white. It's according to your values. But instead of like pretending and portraying virtue, mm-hmm. come on, let's let's like at least take a look at our dark side and embrace some of that too. Cause you repress that and then that shit comes out weird. And then you do things that are harmful to yourself and others. Mm. Wow. So just yeah. know that that's a skill that comes in handy, particularly in business, probably. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Academia. Um, and sometimes you use it and you don't live there. It's a skill you put back in the box then mm-hmm. and then go back to authenticity. And that kind of, um, that can alleviate the shame talking about it in that way too. All right. And I know emotional intelligence is a whole gamut of skills, right? Yeah. How would you, you know, for someone who's not familiar with DBT or um, soft skills, if you were, how would you define I emotional would never say soft skills. Yeah. I would never. It's a good start. <laughs> I know that's a I a think it's term. feminizing. And I think that yeah. that's like not good either like like feminine is soft and easily manipulated or something like whatever with that but right right yes but what's the question well for those who aren't really familiar with the the lingo how would you define interpersonal effectiveness or uh, emotional intelligence i'm well those are two different like Interpersonal effectiveness is one of the modules of Mm -hmm. emotional intelligence, the overarching Mm -hmm. umbrella. I think that the the interpersonal effectiveness module is basically just assertiveness training. Mm -hmm. But the best assertiveness training I've ever seen in my career. So that's in a nutshell what that is. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I... I put that one at the end, even though it comes second in like classic DBT, because I think you need the mindfulness, distress tolerance, and the emotion regulation skills before you add the wild card of another person and their stuff. (laughs) That's true. So I, from the (laughs) beginning, put interpersonal effectiveness last in the teaching. Um, And it's, yeah, it's how to ask for things, how to say no, how to get into conflict while you're still scared instead of your anger is like circumventing the fear. And now you're going to say something that makes it all go to hell in a handbasket like in mm-hmm. a second. But back to that what applied skills thing, mm-hmm. as far as emo- it's not, not emotional intelligence, interpersonal effectiveness, if everybody just, <laughs> before you go into any interpersonal interaction, whether it be conflict or asking for something or saying no to somebody, just define, take one second, actually maybe one minute to define 
what is my objective going into this interpersonal interaction? Mm. If everybody just did that, that would really smooth a lot of crap out once you get nervous and now you're Mm. in front of somebody and you have no direction and then it starts going bad and you're like, oh, what the hell happened? How did I get Mm -hmm. here? Like now I'm saying shit I don't even mean. I'm causing right, right relationship. A lot of times just a mindful even guess. What is my objective going into this ask, into this say no, into this conflict resolution? You're taking responsibility for your half just by defining it. It's so funny. Mm-hmm. You know, there are all these skills that seem very simple and they are conceptually and they all do like five different things that mm-hmm. you don't even have to know for it to do the things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just defining for yourself an objective. How simple is that? Simple. Right. Who, how many people, what percentage of the population does that? Less than one would be my guess. Yes. So let's okay. change those numbers. Right. And it gives you an anchor, you know? Yes, and it does. In my personal work, when I, you know, from a young, younger age, young adult, when I was working on my social anxiety, that's, that's what I did. You know, I would almost gamify it. Like my objective is to get a smile out of this person. My objective is to learn two things about this person. My objective is for them to learn one thing about me. And it might seem very kind of mechanical, but it's really not. It's giving you uh, an anchor to hold on to in in an exchange, right? So practice is what it is. Yes, yes. And And when people say, oh, it's it's robotic or what isn't, aren't people going to, what? Dude, that's just your fear talking, eh? You don't know what the effect is going to be. We're not outcome focused anyway. We're mm-hmm. we're taking responsibility for our values, our emotional experience, how we want to present ourselves. Like just keep the spotlight on yourself and let the chips fall where they may. Because mm-hmm. that person can be, they can while out or do whatever, punish you. It doesn't matter. Is it, it'd be great if they respected your ask or whatever Mm -hmm. try to Mm -hmm. maximize the chances of that however the more important thing is did i behave in a way that i can walk away proud of whether i got what i wanted or not Mm -hmm. that's life you know absolutely no promises right Right. we can only control our actions can't change other people can't get too married you know if we get married to outcomes or get ourselves in trouble disappointment yeah. Totally. Plus, it's again an externally focused thing. Mm-hmm. When we have to be internally focused to be happy, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, to be calm I would agree. Enough to experience yeah. joy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for that. You really broke that down. I love it. I love the way that you frame these concepts. It makes it very digestible for everyone who's listening. And I appreciate that comment because I work hard at that i can tell i can tell it's uh it does take a concerted effort to really to boil these principles down into you know digestible easy to understand bite-sized pedophore bite size yes <laughs> right because that's how we all learn isn't it yeah that's how we all learn we all appreciate that i think when we have the the curse of knowledge or when you're doing this stuff every day or um, maybe because you're more skillful in a particular area, it's easy to talk about things, at least for me, easy for me to talk about things in theory, yeah. but then forgetting to break it down into small actionable steps for people. Yes, and- actionable steps. It's all about the practice of it, however right. small. And then acknowledge yourself, validate your efforts, regardless of how they turned out. You tried mm-hmm. something new. That's a win. Yeah. Even if it went to shit, it's a win because you tried to do, you attempted to do a new thing and that takes courage. So yeah, right on. Reminds me of that that phrase, we win and we win and we learn. There's no losing really. I don't think so. Just data. The cowardice. Right. Because that causes shame and now we're in the red. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, such a wealth of information. I, I could go on for hours with you on, <laughs> on this topic. It's a fun, this is a good yes. time. Yes, yes. 
Um, so if our listeners want to learn more about you, where mm-hmm. should they where should they look? drjjkelly.com. All my stuff is just D R J J K E L L Y, not E Y, just Y. The YouTube channel, the Instagram, my God, since I it. got over my Generation X resistance to social media, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, we have put out so much stuff um, on Instagram for uh-huh. free. The pandemic, we just loaded people up um, with free info. And that's exciting too. I mean, I get trolled, hella trolled, but whatever. That's funny too. Um, but Excellent. you can learn a lot from Instagram. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, 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 And I see I'm on your site here. Yeah. You have all your socials up here at the top. You have a YouTube channel. Yep. Yep. Because I had somebody, I was in a contract where somebody else read the audiobook of the cutting book and I hated it so much that I was, I put out this thing on YouTube. I started the YouTube channel so that I could read my own book by my fireplace and be like, don't buy my book. Just look (laughs) at YouTube. I can't, because she said hyperbole, dude. Oh, like okay. I'm from Wisconsin. I'm going to be 75 years old and people are still going to be like busting my chops about hyperbole. So anyway, <laughs> I've redone it myself. <laughs> Excellent. Take matters into your own hands. I, like it. <laughs> I mean, that that's punk as shit. So I, I stand right. By. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, you certainly seem to have a deep well of information here. Uh, books. 20 years. I oughta. Instagram. Courses, right? Horses. Horses? Horses. Oh, horses. Horses. Yeah. I'm all horses. for equine therapy, but <laughs> yeah, I'd be down with that. I actually <laughs> talked to a lady in Belfast that does that, talking about doing a teen thing. I horses are great for people. Yeah. I could do it, but I would. Cool. Yeah. Podcast, audiobooks, courses, all good stuff. YouTube channel, book series. Yeah. Very good stuff. Well, I, I do appreciate the work you're doing. So much to learn, so much to, to dive into. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. If I ever wanted you back on to, to share a little more or dive into Oh my a, gosh. Any time. Seriously. Oh, thank seriously. you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. You've been a blessing to our audience and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you so you. much, Dr. Kelly, and all the work you're doing. Thank so. you. I appreciate that a lot. Right. Thanks. And I have uh, one more tool in my toolbox to share with everyone. If they have any questions about DBT or anything in that genre, I know where to send them. So nice. thank you. Welcome. Appreciate your work. All right. You enjoy the rest of your week and uh, stay happy and healthy. Thanks. You too. Right. Thank you. Good touch. Bye. Hey, if you're getting value from this content and you haven't done so already, be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and podcast to help raise mental health awareness and be sure to share it with friends and family. All right, well, there you have it, another tool to help you thrive. So until next time, make good things happen. Bye-bye now.